The northern lights on Earth are an incredible sight to behold. In the past, we've also seen this bright phenomena on Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus. Now, for the first time, we have finally seen similar aurorae on the most distant planet of the solar system, the icy giant Neptune. We needed JWST's massive golden mirror and sensitive infrared detectors to do it, but we finally see Neptune's atmosphere glowing bright. We weren't even sure if this was possible. So in this video, let's talk about what JWST saw in these new images, why it was a bit surprising, and why they aren't even at the poles of Neptune. Neptune lurks in the distant reaches of the outer solar system, three billion miles away from the sun and 2.7 billion miles from us on Earth, even though it's a huge planet. With a diameter of 30,775 miles, it's so far away that it appears tiny to all telescopes. Even for JWST, Neptune's resolution is only about 80 pixels in height, and for other telescopes it's often much, much less. This is why it's so hard to capture the kind of details needed to see things like weather patterns and the elusive aurora. In a nutshell, aurorae like the Earth's northern and southern lights are caused by high-energy particles called cosmic rays colliding with atoms in the atmosphere of a planet. For Earth and the other planets in the solar system, the vast, vast majority of these energetic particles come from the Sun. These particles are captured by the magnetic fields of the planet and then funnel down the magnetic field lines where they eventually collide with the atmosphere. That's one of the reasons there's no aurora on the moon or Mercury, for example. No atmosphere means no aurora. As the energetic particles from the sun collide with molecules in the atmosphere, light is emitted, causing the aurora. The different colors we can see in the northern lights are caused by the cosmic rays colliding with different types of particles at different altitudes in the atmosphere. This explanation also tells us why we typically only have aurora near the north and south poles of Earth, because that is where the magnetic fields funnel the high energy particles. So let's have a good look at the new picture of the Neptunian aurora. This is what we've been shown. On the left is an image purely from the Hubble Space Telescope a lovely bluish orb. A few big clouds are visible, but certainly no northern lights. On the right though is where things get new, and we have an image that combines the Hubble image with new JWST data. With this data, we can see aurora for the first time. That said, this isn't the first time we've pointed JWST at the outer planets of the solar system. It's imaged Uranus a couple of times, Jupiter too, Saturn just the once so far, and even Neptune once before. In this older image from September 2022, we can see a good amount of detail on the planet. Several moons of Neptune, including this incredibly bright one called Triton, and even the rings around the planet. Since yes, all four outer planets do indeed have ring systems. They're just not quite as impressive or famous as the one around Saturn. I have videos going into the details of all of those images that I'll link in the description if you're interested. But for now, we'll stay focused on the brand new, colourful Neptune. In the older image, we couldn't see these aurora, but combining JWST with Hubble gives us that power. A few cool things to take away from this new image. Firstly, it was actually quite surprising that enough of the high energy particles from the sun successfully make the three billion mile journey, reach Neptune, and then still have enough energy to produce aurorae. Secondly, and slightly annoyingly for me, because I keep having to say aurorae and not the Neptunian northern lights, is that the lights we can see are decidedly nowhere near the poles of Neptune. This is unlike any other planet we've seen aurorae on before, and it gives us an insight into how weird Neptune is. Specifically, how weird its magnetic field is. It directs the cosmic rays to the middle latitudes of the planet, roughly equivalent to where South America would be on Earth. This is because the magnetic field of Neptune is tilted 47 degrees from the planet's rotation axis. This was actually first discovered back in 1989, when the Voyager 2 probe flew past Neptune, the only time the planet has actually been visited. And we hoped one day to see aurora, but never could until now. Since aurorae occur where the magnetic fields hit the atmosphere, Neptune gets middle lights far from the rotational axis, instead of northern and southern lights at the obvious poles of the spinning planet. 
This new detection gives us a new window into the science of this ice giant and will let us learn even more about how Neptune's magnetic field interacts with those high-energy solar particles in the far reaches of our solar system. The JWST data used here was actually taken back in June 2023, using the telescope's near-infrared spectrograph, NERSPEC. That's different to the first image we saw of Neptune from JWST, which used its near-infrared camera, NERCAM. Hence the difference in ability to pick out these northern lights. Since this time we used NERSPEC, as well as the image, we also got to see a spectrum of the planet. This kind of observation has allowed astronomers to measure the temperature of Neptune's upper atmosphere for the first time since that Voyager 2 flyby in 1989. And again, we found something quite shocking. The top of Neptune's atmosphere has cooled by hundreds of degrees and is now just over half of what it was in 1989. This is pretty surprising, and it could be one of the reasons it took us so long to spot aurorae. Cooler atmospheres make fainter lights. We were predicting our ability to see aurora based on the 1989 temperature, unaware of this cooling. Exactly what's caused that cooling is currently unknown, but it's amazing to see that the planet can evolve so much in a relatively short period of time, despite being so far from the sun and over 30 times more distant than the Earth is. Despite that, its upper atmosphere is evolving more than we expected. One of the next steps is to try and study Neptune over an entire 11-year solar cycle. This might provide insights into the origins of Neptune's bizarre magnetic field, and maybe one day even explain why it's so tilted. The spectra data of the planet yielded one other result too. For the first time, something called trihydrogen, or H3+, was found in the planet's ionosphere. This is a molecule often created in aurorae. On the other giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, H3+, has long been a key signifier of auroral activity. We've always expected to see this same molecule on Neptune too, but until now it had always evaded us, so it's great to get confirmation of its presence with JWST at last. It's not just finally seeing the aurorae that's exciting here, but also the detail and clarity with which we can see it. This is really amazing for a planet that's 3 billion miles away, as us astronomers now excitedly think about future missions to the icy planets of Uranus and now Neptune, we know more than ever that it's important to send along instruments that are sensitive to infrared light so that we can continue to study the planetary aurorae just like this. Feel free to shoot me any questions or comments you have below and subscribe if you'd like to see more spacey content just like this. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!